Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. That was a six inch flipper at 300 yards and I had no problems hitting it 10 for 10 over and over again with Federal Premium Gold Metal Match 69 grain with this Vortex Viper PST 6 to 24 optic that I got from Optics Planet in the American Defense Manufacturing Recon Mount, which is sitting on top of the Faxon Firearms Air Act 21. It's an upper receiver that has a switch barrel system and it's designed to marry the best aspects of the AR-15 with the best aspects of the AK-47. And the 5.56 barrel that's in here is more of a precision oriented barrel. So I had no problems doing that over and over and over again that day. The first time that I had a chance to shoot an Iraq 21 was back in October at Iraq Veteran 8888's YouTuber shoot. And I learned two things. Number one, it's just a really, really cool design. And number two, Fax and Firearms is run by some really, really great people. So when they sent me a receiver and a couple barrels back in December, I was really excited to start my TNE. Well, I delayed this video until they came out with this receiver you see right here. It's their new fully ambidextrous receiver. It's the same as the previous generation, but this has ejection ports on both sides. And that's what's coming up next on Twang and Bang. The AREC-21 is an upper receiver made by Fax and Firearms to fit any standard AR-15 lower. Its design is intended to combine the best aspects of the AR-15 and the AK series of rifles into one firearm. The AREC-21 houses a long stroke variable gas piston in a semi-monolithic heavy duty receiver machine from 6061 T6 aluminum. Ports and shell deflectors on both sides of the receiver allow you to choose left or right ejection. Faxon's design motto was, when in doubt, make it stout, and it shows in both the Arac 21's beefy looks as well as on the scale. At an average of 5.5 pounds with a 16-inch barrel, the Arac 21 upper is no lightweight, but it is very well balanced nonetheless, and all of that beefiness creates a very rigid mount for its switchable barrels. Removable 13-slot Picatinny rails are attached at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions at the front of the handguard. They are insulated by phenolic shims to keep them cooler during extended periods of fire. The non-reciprocating charging handle is located at the front of the handguard. It has a spring detent that snaps it either open or closed and is easily located on either the right or left side without tools. The exposed gas regulator has multiple settings depending on caliber and is easily switched by hand. 5.56 and 7.62x39 have a suppressed, unsuppressed, and maximum gas setting, and a 300 blackout simply has suppressed and unsuppressed. All calibers have an off setting as well for minimum noise to the shooter's ear, as well as allowing emergency manual operation in the event of a persistent cycling problem. Both the regulator and the barrel are clearly marked by caliber, easily visible even when the Arac 21 is fully assembled. Like AK rifles, AREC-21 has its recoil spring in line with the piston to eliminate carrier tilt and potentially increase reliability. This results in a top rail that is 0.65 inches higher than a standard AR-15, which should be considered when selecting stocks and optics mounts. It also means that you don't need a buffer or buffer spring and can even use a folding stock if you like. At this point, you most easily see the similarity between the Arac 21 and an AK, including the fact that even after several hundred rounds without any cleaning whatsoever, the bolt remains very clean. Though the bolt is based on the design of the AR-15 bolt, it is beefier and includes radii that reduce stress risers on the lugs found on mil-spec AR-15 bolts. The Arac 21 bolt also has dual ejectors for increased reliability with a variety of ammunition under a variety of conditions. The firing pin is also buffered by a spring to reduce the chance of a slam fire. The range is the best place to see the versatility of the Arac 21 in action. Pictured is an installed 16-inch 416R fluted stainless 5.56 barrel as was used in the opening clip, and a 16-inch 7.62x39 barrel and 12.5-inch 300 blackout barrel, both in 4150 QPQ nitrided steel. The barrels come assembled with gas blocks ready to drop right into the Arac 21 receiver. The 300 blackout barrel assembly includes a shorter recoil spring and the 7.62x39 assembly includes a bolt and a firing pin. Barrels are manufactured in-house by Fax and Firearms. They are button reamed and MPI inspected for quality and safety. One of the secrets to the Arac 21 system is the trunnion block. It mates the barrel assembly very tightly with the receiver and doubles as the front takedown pin hole. 
Changing a caliber begins with field stripping the ARAC 21. And for this example, I'm switching from my 300 blackout barrel and bolt to my 762 by 39 barrel and bolt. After ensuring the chamber is unloaded and with the bolt carrier in the forward position, you push out the recoil spring guide retainer pin. The guide is then easily removed with a little pressure and downward movement to release it from the receiver. Pull the charging handle rearward to remove the bolt carrier assembly. This exposes the steel liners inside the receiver upon which the bolt carrier cycles, ensuring that there is always steel on steel contact for the major wear surfaces in the ARAC 21. These bolted in liners also give the ARAC 21 a really cool aesthetic, reminding me of bead lockers on off-road or dragster rims. The 762 by 39 barrel assembly uses the same recoil spring as the 556 assembly, and switching is as easy as pulling the shorter 300 blackout recoil spring off the spring guide, then sliding the longer recoil spring back in its place. Even the bolt carrier has some pretty cool innovations, including an easy to operate cross pin retainer for the firing pin that does away with cotter pins and the hassles they create. This makes switching to the 762 by 39 bolt very easy. With the firing pin removed, the cam and bolt drop right out, completing your field stripping of the ARAC 21. 762 by 39 ammo with hard primers might result in light strikes, in which case Fax and Firearms recommends removing the firing pin buffer spring. It's small, so have a baggie handy to keep from losing it. The bolt can be installed for right or left side ejection, so be sure that the extractor is on the side you want the shells to eject. Replace the cam and the firing pin, then push the retention pin back into place, and your bolt carrier is ready for 762 by 39. Removing the barrel requires a 532nd inch hex wrench to loosen the six lower forearm retention screws until they freely spin. These screws are semi-captured, meaning that they can be removed by lifting them enough to engage a second set of threads in the event that you need to replace them. Once the lower forearm is removed, the barrel is free to slide forward out of the receiver. Simply reverse the process to install a different barrel. In doing so, you'll notice just how precise the fit is between the trunnion, gas block, and the receiver. There is no perceivable play at all, even before the lower forearm is tightened into place at 30 inch pounds. This precise fit is why the ARAC 21 can still print sub MOA groups even though it's not technically a free floated barrel. The harmonics between the gas block and the trunnion are kept consistent by the extremely rigid receiver regardless of whether you're shooting offhand, with a vertical grip, or with a bipod. I found that reinstalling the bolt carrier and recoil spring is easiest with the ARAC 21 muzzle down on a non-marring surface. Be especially careful not to damage the crown if you don't have a muzzle device attached. Faxon installs a small weight on the end of the recoil spring that really helps getting it lined up with the piston. Once the carrier and the spring are in place, simply pop the recoil spring cross pin closed and function check the action. Before I get this together, I want to show you something that's really cool about the ARAC 21. Makes it very similar to an AK. Everything that happens, the entire action is located inside this receiver. You don't have a bolt carrier coming out of the back like you do with an AR-15. So that means that your lower doesn't need to have a buffer, buffer spring, or even a buffer tube you can have a folding stock mechanism and still use the ARAC 21. I don't have a lower with a folding stock, but if I were to dedicate a lower to this upper, I definitely would do that because I think that's a really neat feature that you can have and you can only have because of the way the, the ARAC 21 piston and recoil spring are all contained right here in this receiver. I have a lot more testing to do with the 7.62x39 barrel assembly, but as you can see, I had no problems with either the ARAC 21 or the C Products mags recommended by Fax and Firearms with Wolf Military Classic. I plan a 1,000 round mix ammo function test soon to further test the reliability of this barrel assembly, and that will get a video of its own. <laughs> oh, that is fun. Oh, man. One of the greatest features of this new ARAC receiver is that it is truly ambidextrous. No tools or additional parts are needed to set up either the charging handle or the ejection on the right or left side. Switching the charging handle from right side to left side is easy in a technical sense, but it can be hard in a physical sense depending upon the particular charging handle that you have because these are hand fitted parts. The idea is, of course, after you clear the weapon, you have it in the folded position, you push rearward until you can get it 
in, pushed in towards the receiver rail, and then it'll pop out. You just flip it over to the side you want. You use this edge right here to push the detent back. You get it back far enough. This will push in. There. Oh. <laughs> so it's a little harder to do on camera than it is when I can line up, see what I'm doing really well. There we go. Now it's in there. So it is relatively easy to change from right side to left side. You don't need to use any tools, but it can take a bit of finagling to get it the combination of pressures just right to remove it and switch it. So don't be frustrated if yours is a little bit hard at first <laughs> because you'll eventually get the knack of it so that it, it goes in and comes out as you need it. That's pretty cool. Changing the ejection is actually even easier than that. It just takes a little bit more time. You have to get the recoil spring out of the way. And then of course, remove the bolt assembly and push the retention spring out of the way, pull the firing pin out, dump the cam out, and then you're gonna rotate the extractor to the side you want to the ejection to happen. So I now have it set up for right side ejection. Put the cam pin back in with the radius matching the radius inside the carrier group. Put your firing pin back in and once you get the cross retention pin back in, you're ready to reassemble. And now it's gonna eject on the other side. So that's how easy it is to switch this from right side to left side all together, charging handle <laughs> and ejection. Super, super easy with this new ambidextrous upper that they just made. I think that's a pretty cool feature to have. Even when shooting suppressed, you'll see me wear hearing protection a lot uh, because a childhood prank left me with permanent hearing loss in my left ear. I get tinnitus really, really easily. And so even suppressed subsonics and a 300 blackout, the action noise will bother my ear enough that I want to wear hearing protection. But one of the great things about the AirRack 21 is with this forward charging handle and this gas system, I could turn the gas off <laughs> that gets kind of warm after you shoot for a bit. And now, no need for hearing protection because all of the gas noise is going out the end of the barrel and is being suppressed. And that's really, really nice. This is exactly the setup that I would use if I were hunting, say, over a food plot where I can really pick my shots because I'm a pretty sure shot uh, even under hunting conditions. Uh, because this really maximizes the suppression. Mainly for me as a shooter, I don't really care whether uh, a deer hears the gunshot after the bullet's already left the barrel. It's not going to make a difference. But that's one of the features that I really, really like about adjustable gas blocks that have an offsetting. <laughs> I'm really glad that the AIRAC 21, every single one of their barrels comes with that offsetting. The biggest technical challenge of the current AIRAC 21 design is that the gas port has to be at the exact same place regardless of caliber or barrel length. In fact, Facts and Firearms clearly states that their 12 and a half inch 300 blackout barrel might not cycle with all types of subsonic ammo, and I've found this to be true. In short, the gas port on all of the AIRAC 21 barrels is at a length somewhere between carbine and mid length, but 300 blackout autoloaders behave best with a gas port at pistol length. If this doesn't make any sense to you, you just watch what happens. The first thing I notice is that even with rounds that fully cycle the action, the bolt doesn't lock all the way back on an empty mag. It actually hangs over the back of the mag, preventing you from using the bolt release paddle to charge the rifle after a mag change. Instead, you must pull the charging handle to the rear, and that takes care of that issue. 
Then you run into ammo that uses fast powders that are very quiet, but don't have a lot of pressure left by the time the bullet passes the gas port. That's when you might get failures to feed, like the ones I'm getting with 208 grain AMAX loads from Ozark Ordnance. Interestingly enough, the same bullet loaded by Beck ammunition cycled fine, but again, the bolt did not lock fully to the rear at the end of the mag. Because of this, I would recommend sticking with the 16 inch barrel if you're going to go with 300 blackout, unless you really need to save 3.5 inches of length and you are willing to be flexible with the ammo that you use. Fax and Firearms is actually working on a design update that will allow them to put the gas port wherever they want, and that should make all the difference in the world for the AirX reliability with 300 blackout subsonic ammunition. If you follow enough firearms oriented Facebook pages, you know the AirX 21 has a very broad fan base, and I think that's in part to its stunning looks. I'm not arguing that that is a reason to buy an AR-15 upper at all, but to my eye, it's, it's got a very artful aesthetic, and I know I've got a lot of people that agree with me. It also has a fan base and industry because of how precisely machined it is, but along with that precise machining comes a premium price. The upper receiver with one barrel starts at $1,200, and each additional barrel assembly unit is another $300 if you buy them together, it's another $400 if you buy it separately at a later time. When you consider though that you get a piston upper receiver, a precision upper receiver, and one that is fully ambidextrous, you start to see why it costs $1,200 to start. And when you realize that for $1,800 you can get three calibers of barrels and everything that you need to shoot them to go along with it, you start to see that there's actually a value there for people who want those features. If you want to learn more about the Eric 21, be sure to click the link in the video description below. Be sure to follow me at Facebook at facebook.com forward slash twangandbang.net, spelled out D-O-T-N-E-T, -E to see more pictures and videos of the Eric 21 in action. And be sure to click right here to subscribe so you can catch my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.